The road we're on is paved in Garth. Come along on the journey. As we explore Garthology. I think of it more as a conversation. I like that. So if this is truly a conversation, then I say let the conversation begin. Hey guys, I'm Deb. I'm Pete. And I'm Jess. So in today's episode, we are going to talk about Garth's wind show in Las Vegas, where he held a residency for like three years, I think it was. Um, he also released a box set with the DVD called Blame It All on My Roots. So Pete, how did you feel about the DVD? Well, I'm glad that he did release the DVD because this is one thing that Garth did for many, many years that I was not able to attend. I still can't believe you never yeah. went to one show in three wow. years. We were set to go to the New Year's show, which was the one that you went to right around your birthday. And I ended up getting sick and I just couldn't get out of bed to make it happen. So um, I'm glad he released the DVD. I've watched it enough to actually believe that uh, I was there. <laughs> so even though I wasn't, I pretty much know that I was at some point, but I, I still can't count it as a last I still show. can't believe you were in Las Vegas, you had a ticket, and you were so sick you couldn't get out of bed. It just yeah, broke our heart. Jess and I were both there. I mean, but at the same time, uh, we had a great time. <laughs> yes, we did. We missed you, but we still had a good time. <laughs> well, there was another time we were at the shop you guys were at the shop getting a service done on a car and you're like, Hey, what do we try to get tickets to go see Garth at, in Vegas at the win? And we sat down and we found tickets and I just couldn't make it happen. There was something, whatever it was, I don't know, maybe it's, I shouldn't go to Vegas or whatever, but I just couldn't find a way to get to that damn yep. show. And we, Jess and I bought our tickets that morning sitting in front of Pete at his auto shop. And we went to each of our houses because we were together um, in one car. And we went to Jess's place and she packed up. We went to my place and I packed up, told the husband, got to go, take care of the kids, see you later. And we went to Vegas and we <laughs> just went straight to the show. Like we got there, I remember we hit traffic and we were worried that we weren't going to make it in time, but we made it just in time, dropped our stuff at a hotel room, ran to the show. And it, we ended up, we were really close like our tickets were awesome. It was so perfect. When you live four hours from Vegas and Garth has a sit down show there, you right? go when you can get you tickets. See, you unless you're me. <laughs> <laughs> you just you just sit at home and watch it on a DVD 178,000 times. That's what you do if you're me. <laughs> Didn't you guys go to two shows that night? So when we were there that weekend with you, we went to two shows. And that's because we had our tickets for the first show. We went in, watched it. It was awesome. We walked out saying, I can't believe he's going to do another show right now. And we're not in it. We went to the desk. They had tickets available. We bought tickets and went to the second show. <laughs> went right back in. <laughs> Just so back awesome. to back. It was fantastic. So I think Jess, both of us saw it three times, right? We ended up seeing it three times. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah well, neither one of you guys seen it as many times as I had on DVD. <laughs> Not a chance. Not a well, chance. Well, that's probably true. You probably I'm almost willing to bet the person who edited that DVD and put it together hasn't seen it as many times <laughs> as I have. Awesome. So <laughs> before we get into the show, I want to know if you guys heard this. And I don't know, I meant to actually Google search it and I, I, I never got around to doing it. But I heard that when Steve Wynn went to Garth about doing the residency there, it was while Garth's daughters were still in school and it was during his retirement. I heard that Garth said that the only way he could make it happen was if he had guaranteed transportation to and from Oklahoma and Vegas, because he was only willing to do it on the weekends, but he had to make sure that he was there for the girls every day for school and soccer. And Steve Wynn actually said, let me buy you a private jet, use it as you please, but please come do a residency at the Wynn. They ended up shaking hands, making the deal, and that's how it all yep. started. That's what I remember hearing. Yeah, that's my understanding. True yeah, story. True story, yeah. absolutely. That's fantastic. Well, I wish I had Steve Wynn's money and a jet like Garth. That'd be cool. <laughs> 
Right? I mean, if I had Steve Wynn's money, I would give Garth a jet to come <laughs> play at my hotel. Listen, if Steve Wynn's listening and he's got that money, give a jet to Peter. <laughs> you'd never miss a Garth show again. Whatever Garth right. was playing that night, you'd be flying to it. I'll shake Steve's hand and tell him, hey, listen, I promise you, you give me a jet, wherever Garth's playing, I'll go watch it. <laughs> I'm sure that letter is in the mail as we speak. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And when I'm in Vegas, I'll stay at your hotel. <laughs> and he's got a great golf oh, course. Oh, does he? Have you actually golfed there? No, it's too <laughs> expensive. He's got to pay for that jet. That's fantastic. He's, he's looked at it as he drove by. It's beautiful. <laughs> Look at that. It's so pretty. <laughs> I wish I could play there. Okay, yeah. so before we start talking about the DVD, which we will focus on the DVD for this podcast, Jess and I have just teased Pete enough with, how much he didn't get to see the show and how we got to see it multiple times. So we'll right. let him off the hook now and just talk about the DVD that he knows. But before we do yeah. that, let's all raise a glass. So for you out there, all three of us right now are drinking pina coladas. Pina coladas. We each only have one in each hand, one in one hand, not one in each hand, but we are doing it. If we had two in each hand, we'd, this podcast would get out of control. At least here we see, keep some kind of focus. That's right. We're talking about who again? Yeah. Okay, so thoughts on the DVD. Where do you guys want to start? Like, I love, this is the dumbest thing to be the first thing that I say. I love that he was in jeans and a flannel, dude. He was just Garth out yeah. there. I love that. And a ball cap. Yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. That's one of my favorite things. Yeah. Two general impressions right off the bat. One is... Because you didn't get to see the live show, Pete, and for anyone out there who didn't, the DVD is a brilliant representation of what it was. I mean, it's just like any live show. There's tiny things that are different and, you know, probably different, maybe a couple different songs. But like the feel of it and the most of the songs are the same. So you pretty much got the live experience. They did a great job of of giving you that at home, I think. So I have one question before, and I know this is kind of jumping towards the end of the DVD, but because I wasn't there live, I have a question for you guys. Trisha comes out and sings with him. Before mm -hmm. she leaves the stage, she says that she gives, she wants to give him a gift. And it's a gift that's actually already his, and she brought it from home. And she hands him a cowboy hat after saying, I know where our lives have brought us. I know where I think our lives are going to go. And I think it's time that you put this back on. Like she was announcing them coming out of retirement. Did she do that in the live shows that you guys went I to? I don't remember that. I don't remember that. I think they just did that at the end, you know, because the show was wrapping up and that was kind of the end of their day there at the win. I yeah. think I could be wrong. I think I've let it all blend together in my mind yeah, after these years, but I don't remember that. Yeah, I think it was just something they did. Although the I do think that that was, like you said, I think it was a hint towards him getting ready to go out on tour again. The girls were grown and... And she was kind of pushing him and saying, it's okay. You've done what you wanted while you were tired. You've done it. And now it's okay yeah. for you to go back out. But I also yeah. think that it's a signal that the rest of the show from that point on was all Garth Brooks. It was Garth. Right. Yeah. And I had heard that she had made a, uh, there was an interview or something somewhere and somebody had asked them that. And uh, she said, yeah, you know, it was kind of that thing that they, they had an idea and that they were using the residency at the win to kind of reintroduce Garth Brooks music back into the country music world because he had been retired for so many years. And uh, not that I don't think he would have really ever needed that anyway, but I thought that that was, if that's what it was about, I mean, that was just amazing, you know, way to do it, right? Get yourself a residency, reintroduce your music and then come out and absolutely kill it on your world tour. Uh, unbelievable. And the fact that he got to do it with Trisha was pretty cool. Yeah. Too, so. And for three years, yeah. he got to still be at home with his girls, but also... Right. concerts that he wanted to do sure. so that was great for him too and for his fans because if you right. had the means to get to vegas you knew where he was going to be do we have to keep bringing that up <laughs> that's twice since we said we weren't going to do it anymore okay but no i think i think the the dvd is great i uh like i said you know going back to taking from it yeah you know with garth coming out and just being garth and an acoustic guitar you know himself he comes out and you know in the beginning he's got to thank the big man steve and you got to introduce the band and he looks around and he goes this is it it's just me and uh you know the way that they told the story about how garth brooks got his music i when i put the dvd in the first time i didn't 
that's not what I expected for sure. I mean, I just thought Garth would be out there singing Garth songs. And when he tells the entire story, you know, starting in the sixties through the seventies and eighties, of course, when he got his record deal um, and the different influences of music that different people brought into the house, right. His dad, you know, obviously, you know, he tells him hang the moon on Haggard and Jones and you hear the different styles of music that Haggard sang and George Jones sang. And, you know, then the influences from his mom, you know, Aretha Franklin, different music like that. And the fact that he has, you know, five brothers and sisters that would bring different music in and how all of that eventually ended up influencing one or multiple songs of his. I took that mainly from the DVD because it showed how Garth got Garth music and, you know, where it started and where it's come to. I guess looking back on it, I never thought that before that DVD, you, you know, music artists would be influenced by past musical artists and the music that they did, even if it was out of the same genre. And now you hear a lot of people today talk about musical influence where Garth was their musical influence. And you could hear a little bit of Garth's music in there. So it's yeah, pretty cool. I agree. Yeah. And I had said, you know, there were two main takeaways that I took from it. And the other one had to do kind of with that, because, you know, you said it covers from the 60s to the 70s to the 80s. And he kind of gives a piece of those and the things that influenced him. And and what I took away from that is hearing him sing parts of each of those things. He really could have sang any genre he wanted to do. He Henry, yeah. been amazingly successful at any one of those because he could sing those old country songs. He could sing a James Taylor song and and own it it was crazy to me it I, and it wasn't like an impersonation it he just got each kind of music like he could just do it he could play it he could sing it and that was the other big takeaway for me from the whole show and just as impressively enough the fact that he knows the lyrics and can sing it garth's way i mean and like you said at any genre bluegrass soul country classic rock whatever it was the fact that he could play it on a guitar without missing yeah. a string is unbelievable the amount of talent that that must take i can't hold a guitar <laughs> let alone yeah. play yeah and another thing that it did for me i listen to country music i listen to garth brooks and i listen to country music now sure have i heard a lot of the bob seger and james taylor and some of that old stuff sure i've heard it but i don't listen to it i got that dvd and i listened to it i listened to the way that garth sang it instantly it went on to the playlist on my phone because I can hear the way that they sing it. I know how Garth sings it. I kind of come to a, a happy medium. It's fantastic. It really introduced me to different genres of music that I wouldn't normally listen and to. And I love yeah. how, and we won't go into them now because this show is talking specifically about the DVD, but eventually we will do reviews of the CDs that were included in the box set, which is the Boy All on My Roots CDs. I love those. I love those old songs and I love that he covered them. Those are some of my favorite versions of those songs that he covered. I just love hearing him do songs that I grew up with. Like those were all my songs too. Garth's a little bit older than I am, but they were the songs that I was listening to because I have six brothers and sisters and they're all older than me. So the same music that he was hearing from his brothers and sisters is exactly what I was hearing from my brothers and sisters. Oh, that's a very fun connection. I never thought, I mean, I, mean, I know your family, but I never thought about that. That's awesome. And I was the same way. I, I'm just blown away by the idea that he could stand up on a stage with just him and an acoustic guitar and play every song that, I mean, those are not his songs. Yeah, he grew up with them. And when he starts singing one of those songs, I can sing it right back to him. But I don't have to know how to play the guitar for every one of them and be in front of all of those people. And he just does it so effortlessly. And also in the DVD, he's hilarious. Like, he is so yeah. funny. Yeah. Yeah. He, he tells an entire life story while playing that music and he doesn't skip a beat. He's a seven time entertainer of the year for a reason. He can entertain in any way, whether it's on stage with music, on stage with storytelling. He is a true singer, songwriter and entertainer. And he proves it in the DVD. It's, it's yeah. phenomenal. It's got to be one of the yeah. best concert DVDs I think that's ever been released. Yeah, I think there's a certain amount of charisma that any successful performer has to have. And he definitely has that like, but it's 
I think the difference with Garth is that it's very genuine at the same time. Like it is charisma. You do want to listen to what he has to say. It's very entertaining, but you feel like he's talking to you and he's very direct and always, you know, his intention is focused on his audience all the time. It's just an intimate relationship. And I don't think most people can do that. I think that's why he's so, so successful. Sure. Like you said, we'll go on to the the covers and things later, but listening to Garth do those covers actually turned me on to listening to other people do different covers that you wouldn't normally, you know, think of. Aldine is one of my uh, guys that I listen to now, Jason Aldean. And he was on VH1 Crossroads with Bob Seger. You know, and I know Garth, he references Bob Seger quite a bit. So I listened to Aldean and Seger. Phenomenal. I mean, it just opened up a complete different mindset on on cover music that I had never had before. And Jess had yeah. mentioned he's not doing an impression. The one impression that he does do in the DVD is when he does Bob Dylan. And I will say yeah. that was a fantastic, <laughs> 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 that was a fantastic that was Bob Dylan impression. Uh, that cracked so me up. He did yeah. so, so well. The crazy thing is, is the storytelling that he tells about the other artists really show you what those other artists were about. You know, Haggard singing about prison songs and George Jones singing about love songs, uh, the way that Bob Dylan, or the way that he would write his music. And I never, you know, you think every CD that comes out, right? I mean, I I went from the cassettes to CDs. There was always lyrics. You know, now cell phones, lyrics are there. I guess there was never any lyrics. I didn't know that. I didn't know that that was even legal. How do you send out a DVD or a music cassette tape with no lyrics? Well, Great I stories. love that that he had to get the the Billy Joel version <laughs> to, to find out what Bob Dylan's lyrics are. Understand? <laughs> right. Yeah, I also love his facial expressions. They're the absolute yeah. best in this, and I'm sure he he well, does that in all of his concerts. But the DVD just captures them perfectly. Like every when he right. does, <laughs> I can't even when he does that. <laughs> 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 I love that. That cracks me up. See, now y'all are going to have to, you can't see us and what we just did, but if you get the DVD or if you have the DVD, pop it back in and watch it and you'll know what we were just talking about. (laughs) I don't think I'm gay. I don't think I'm gay. (laughs) But this man was beautiful. (laughs) I quoted him. Uh, I don't think I'm gay. That's when he was talking about James Taylor. That whole story about meeting James Taylor. It touches me so much like you can tell that that is like a day garth will remember forever yeah yeah i mean he tells the story so perfectly you know naming his first daughter after james you know taylor obviously and uh james taylor coming into the dressing room after they were supposed to rehearse for that vh1 honors um and you know coming in and knowing the names to everybody without no introduction that you know, and you're right, the way that Garth tells you know he's before he comes in he's all you know smelling his (laughs) armpits and you know all that stuff hey you know james taylor big you know, guy walks the way. God, he's just so good. He tells a great story. He really does. And and he hits some like really valid points. You know, he talks about the 60s songs and how they didn't even bother, you know, to finish writing the song. They just filled it in with right. la la la's. And <laughs> la 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 la. I, just, I love that. I'm yeah. like, he's absolutely right. Absolutely yeah, true. Absolutely. Yeah. And in the 70s, what in the hell were they talking about? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, gosh. Well, and again, talking about lyrics, like, you know, growing up before the internet where you could just look everything up, if you didn't have an album or a CD or whatever, I remember, like, with my siblings being like, what does that song right? say? What, yeah. what are they? It doesn't make any sense. And it really doesn't make any sense. We were, you know, we were trying to make something make sense that doesn't it's true. Not. I would get a cassette recorder and you'd record off the radio. You know, you had to hit, what yeah. was it? Play and record yeah. at the same time. And you'd record. Yeah. Out the radio, and then that way you could play it back over and over. And I would write down the lyrics so that I could memorize songs quicker. So yeah, that's what we had to do. For those of you that only have been alive during the internet, that's what we had to do. My favorite line that he talks about ones that don't make sense in the seventies. He was talking about the songs and the lyrics. You know what the hell was going on there? The one that he quotes is alligator lizards in the air. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> that was one song in the whole thing that I was like, I don't think I have ever heard that song. Like everyone laughed and I was like, oh, no. Oh, you don't know that? I, I totally know that no, song. straight over my head. I did not know it. And I, I literally knew every That's other song. So there was a couple Elton John references that he made, like Helter Skelter, whatever, whatever that you know, referee on and standing on the sideline and a cast. And I'm like, I had never heard it, but for sure enough, as soon as I saw it, I Googled it and I'm like, 
oh my god those are the real yeah. lyrics you know i know all those songs you can tell and, i'm the oldest of the three of us because yeah. i know all those songs <laughs> yeah, yeah just unbelievable he does you know it talks about the 60s and then you know the 70s and then i guess towards the later part of the 70s early 80s you see if you really pay attention you know you could bridge the two of them together where and the song, they, you know, didn't have the lyrics all the way finished. And then, you know, obviously at the back end, then they, they did finish them. But what in the heck were they talking about? You know, he talks about when he was doing the um, the Oscars and, you know, he got this song and he's like, everybody starts singing it and everybody's like, yeah. And he's like, no, it's eight and a half minutes. And nah, nah, but I just <laughs> laughed so hard. He was all excited to get his song. Ah, uh, it's classic. You know, another thing I love about the DVD is the stories, not only about the celebrities when he meets them or the songs uh, that he listened to growing up, but also just the personal stories that he told. He tells such great stories about his family life, and you can really tell what his life was like growing up. You know, he talks about his mom and this part, as far as I'm concerned, my <laughs> kids will be able to tell the exact same story. Uh, when he says she was this tall and his arm goes all the way down because uh, yeah, for those down. all you out there that don't know me, I am really, really short. I have a feeling that his mom and my mom and myself were probably all right about the same size. So I will always <laughs> love that story. And I also, just like his mom, I tend to have a heavy right foot. So yeah. I love that story that, you know, 75 of her 85 pounds is in her right foot. I'd like to believe that quite a bit of my stature is in my right foot also. <laughs> uh, it's funny. It talks about, uh, you know, his dad obviously always working two jobs, right? Two jobs. So he, there's two reasons why I want to make sure there's food on the table for his kids and that all of his kids got a chance to go to college. Uh, he said, you know, the story about his third job, which is funny, right? I mean, I have one job. I'm fortunate. But my second job, buy a car, you fix it up, put a little money in it, turn around, sell it for more, right? I, you know, you you get into a position where at some point, especially in the automotive business, where you have opportunity to do that. It doesn't. I know. He's right. You never, you never make any money off it. It doesn't work. You, end up, you get way out of hand or whatever. But the stories he tells about the different cars that they had and, you know, um, he explains the cars, you know, me being in the automotive business, like, holy moly. Like, you know, you remember nowadays you talk to customers who have their, their classics. They're in their garage. They're covered up. They're restored, whatever it is. You know, the Chevy Love two-door pickup truck. Oh, what a truck, man. What a truck. And uh, you know, he talks about all of them piling in the back and, you know. Oh, God. He also yeah. tells the story about standing up in a car and how his mom's yeah, nice arm that. would be the only thing that would <laughs> stop him, even though he weighed more than she did. That is a yeah. true story. I, Like I said, I grew up in a big family. I grew up, I mean, until I was probably four years old, I stood in the front seat of the car in between my mom and dad, without a doubt, every time, because I wanted to be able to see what was going on. There were no seatbelts. Uh, and if there was? They were just shoved underneath with all the beer cans. Beer cans, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing I like about it is, uh, you know, it goes through, it's almost like a live version of the anthology book because you get to hear stories about his songs and how they came to be and like what songs influenced them. But like one of the ones when he talked about how Papa loved Mama, I was like, I swear every time I hear that song now, I'm going to hear the Law and Order like dun dun because it was literally ripped from a headline. It was from a newspaper article with a big rig through a hotel. And I mean, how else would I have ever known that story? But to get to see him tell the story about where that came from and how they decided to write that song was was pretty awesome. I love how the real stories are weaved throughout it. And I love how he takes something and like he said, he started talking about rhythm and blues, and then he used that mm -hmm. segment to lead right into rodeo. You know, he took a story, yeah. took a, you know, a genre of music and then led it into talking about his own songs and then playing it. Yeah, where Chris Ledoux said you add a little cowboy stuff on top of that sound and you get rodeo. And I was like, oh, you do. I never heard for this show, but you, you really, really do. do. I love it. Yeah, he said, yeah, you don't really do that. And he said, but Chris Ledoux tell you different. You put two things in a room that just don't belong just to see what would happen. And then, bam, you know, out comes rodeo. Crazy. Yeah. Crazy. You know, it's like he talks about Seeger uh, having that road anthem, right? And it's an influence. Seeger was from Michigan. And he listens to that road anthem that Seeger had out. And then you listen to a couple sounds of it. But to Garth, it was, you know, it sounded like thunderclouds were rolling in. Bam, here comes the thunder. And, he, and it just yeah. goes right into it. Oh, yeah, my goodness Yeah, and he's talking gracious. about James so Taylor, good. and that led into the river. 
the river yeah yeah it, it just went on and on and on it was so good yeah and Mrs. Robinson being a uh, kind of an inspiration for, for that, that summer. summer, I totally see that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And and the way that he like even you know going back like to the music that his mom loved, you know Aretha Franklin and uh, Gladys Knight in the Pit. Yeah, and one of my favorite things from the DVD, which now whenever I watch that, I will always think of Pete, is when he does the Haggard and Jones. Oh, yeah. Haggard, Jones. <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty cool. I was his dad told him, if you just stick with Haggard and Jones, you're going to do all right. Hang the moon by him. And, uh, you know, the fact that his dad was a Korean war vet and a gold glove boxer, you got to believe that a man like that, he tells you to do something, you probably got to listen to him. So I thought that was a real cool story, the way that, uh, you know, he was able to paint a picture of the kind of man that his dad was. You know, he obviously worked two jobs. He was always there to play ball with the kids after working two jobs, um, you know, and Gar says that there was a lot of things that his dad did while he was young for all of the kids that actually pushed them to be where they're at. Uh, it's getting off topic of that with the Netflix special. That's more in there. But, um, you know, he paints a real good picture of his dad and his mom, his brothers and sisters and all their musical influences. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I love getting that behind the scenes about his family. That's one of my favorite things. Another one of my favorite things on the DVD is when Trisha comes out. I just love it from beginning, the middle, to the end. I love them together. Nice shoes. <laughs> I love the shoes. Nice and shoes. she says, thanks for letting me borrow them. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> They're so entertaining. And I feel like that really lets their personalities shine through because they are both funny people. Truly funny. And it's it's just fun to let them converse and just watch them kind of, you know, yeah. talk to the yeah. audience. Like, I love bring that. everybody in. You know, conversation. You need any time to warm up? No, no, I think I'm good. <laughs> All right. Well, it's taking me an hour to get this good <laughs> later on. What are you doing after the show? I don't know. It takes you an hour to warm up. <laughs> oh, so I good. Love that. It was so good. Delivered perfectly. They are so good. I love together. when he starts playing the song and she goes, You're so big and strong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> people, people, serious business here, people. That's oh, so good. And then he says, How you doing? And she goes, yeah. Security. Yeah, it's a little uncomfortable. <laughs> I just love them. I love every moment of that. I love when she brings him the hat. I love that whole scene. Um, I love that it sets up the rest of the show as well as, hey, go back out on the road. You've done your yeah. job. Now it's time for you. I love that too. Yeah, and God bless them. I'm so glad they did. Right, for sure. And that song, the, the, I think uh, the name of it's The Call, I believe. Oh, that they do that together one. is so good that duet you know of course um in another's eyes and i mean like you guys have said you know the way that they sing together the way that they interact how funny they are together like legitimately relationship goals for sure a like couple goals for sure they are just so good together in all aspects it's pretty awesome yeah 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 they just look like, I mean, they're definitely each other's person and they wouldn't rather spend time with anyone else. And who doesn't hope for that? Right. right. She talks about what's it like being married to Garth Brooks. Well, you know, it's awesome and all. But, you know, I wake up in the morning. And <laughs> he tells me to turn on the fog machine. And he, I love that story. <laughs> Gosh, dang it. He it's comes good. up out of the floor. Sometimes he makes me say, floor, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. Yeah. With a headset <laughs> on. Garth yeah. Brooks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fog machine guy and then you, it paints a picture because then you start thinking they probably got a house big enough they probably could do that if they wanted <laughs> <laughs> each morning does garth really come up out of the floor okay now i actually my first show seeing him live was in 1996 i'll have to post a picture on the website of uh some pictures that i took there because i was really close and that was the one where he came up out of the piano so I'm like, oh, that's hmm, awesome. does he come, maybe come up out of the piano? And Trish is standing <laughs> off to the side. Now introducing Mr. Garth Brooks. Ladies and gentlemen, Garth Brooks. <laughs> the dogs are sitting there waiting for him to start singing. They've got a, like an applause machine that, yeah. If none of this happens, I don't care if it doesn't happen. In my head, I believe it does. that's yeah, how it does. happens every morning. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely you know, back, when, back when he was missing being on tour and maybe when corona rolled around and they couldn't get out for the live shows they have to roll out the whole piano again <laughs> oh, that's uh, awesome yeah that was a, that was a good show and then when trisha leaves and it pretty much becomes all garth and 
you know, then he does some of the road anthems. It goes back to when we covered uh, Friends in Low Places. You know, he talks about now this is it. This is my chance at an anthem. You know, could it happen? And you hear the first three strings. Everybody knows it. It's uh, pretty cool. Gosh, one of my favorite scenes from the DVD is when he starts playing Shameless. And he just mm. stops playing the guitar. And it's so intense. And then he just, like, unhooks the the strap. And he just stands there yeah. holding it. Oh, I love that. I love that so yeah. much. I'm always impressed with him and with Trisha because they did it also with In Another's Eyes. But when they just, for one thing, it's all acoustic anyway. But then even when that stops and they're just singing a cappella and to stay on key, everyone has gone to see somebody live who you're really excited to see. And it's terrible with no auto tune and no, like they cannot carry a tune in a bucket. So to listen to them sing with no background and hit those amazing belty notes and just be on pitch and together or even separately to be able to hit those kind of notes is that's talent. Yeah. That's insane talent that even other famous people don't have. Right. It's amazing. That yeah. is unbelievable. Yeah. And if you think about all the different songs that he does, so I made notes of, I think I captured every other artist that he does a song for on that DVD. So he does Haggard songs. He does Jones songs. He does Simon and Garfunkel, Cat Stevens, Otis Redding, Bill Withers, James Taylor, Don McLean, Elton John, Bob Seger, George Strait, Randy Travis, Keith Whitley, Jim Croce and Billy Joel, and the yeah. and Gladys Knight and the Pips. 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 Yes, Gladys Knight and the Pips. He just like he covers so many different artists. It's unbelievable. And genres. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think, like Jess said, he could have been an artist in any genre. Like he, I'm sure country music is where his heart is and where it always has yeah. been. But he could have done anything. And that's why, yeah. and again, we'll review those CDs later. That's why I love those CDs from this box set. Because he does, on those, he does um, Maggie May by Rod Stewart. And he does yeah. so many others that he didn't do in the DVD, didn't get captured in the DVD. I love that. So that's for another day, though. Well, and music is really one of the only creative outlets where you kind of have to pick a kind like that because I mean it's like telling an actor you can only be in dramas or you can't you know you can only be in one type of movie people get pigeonholed but typically they can do whatever they want and same thing with writers like they do have a genre maybe they write mysteries or whatever but they could probably write whatever they wanted if they're successful at it but they just write sing act do whatever you know they have a heart for and thankfully for us Garth has a heart for country music but I like to think we probably would have all loved him and listened to him no matter what kind of music he chose to do you could tell where they're most comfortable and that's when you're going to probably get their best, you know, acting or their best songwriting, whatever. It just seems like Garth can be comfortable in any genre, any song, any guitar that he's playing. So I think that's pretty cool too. Like you said, it's just got that knack. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and we've talked before about how, you know, amazing he is at storytelling and either writing or picking those songs. And I think probably country music lends itself the best to telling those kind of beginning, middle and end stories maybe better than other genres would have. So, you know, maybe that was up his alley a little bit, but certainly he could have done it all. Sure. So I think for me, those were all the stories that I wrote down, everything that I wanted to talk about. Is there anything else about the DVD that you guys wanted to hit on? I don't think so. I really had to refrain <laughs> myself on this one. I, I could have talked about it from start to finish. So this could have got way out of control. And I imagine it'll come up in future casts. So uh, I'm okay with it. <laughs> At some point in some other podcast, he'll be like, but wait, right. in the DVD. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Or, you know, if Garth ever goes back to Vegas for a residency, I might be able to go that time. You sure? You think you'll make it next time? Maybe? Uh, yeah, I'll find a way. I, I think I think he'd be at the very first show <laughs> to make sure he didn't miss it this time. I will see him in Vegas. It might not be a residency, <laughs> but I will see him in Vegas in a couple months. That's right. We It'll be a stadium show. Yeah. Yeah. You've got the big show. Big one. So now we're going to go into calling breaking news because we have a lot of it. Yes, we do. There's a ton of Garth breaking news right now. So I'm sure anyone who listens to this podcast is also following everything Garth 
you know, his Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all those. For those of you that may not have heard, both the Fun album and the Triple Live album will be available on November 20th this year, 2020. And right now they actually have a bundle on Talk Shop Live that includes Fun, Triple Live, and Christmas Together, the Christmas album with Trisha. So those are all bundled together. The Triple Live is actually going to have six different covers available. Now you don't get to pick your cover. It's going to be random if you buy it online, but there's going to be an exclusive version through Talk Shop Live. There's going to be an exclusive version at Walmart. And then Target is going to have four different covers. So that's how they come to the six different covers. And in case you haven't seen the image, there's actually an image floating around and I'll post it on our website that shows all six of the different covers. So those are all the different covers that are available. Uh, The bundles on his website. He was just this morning when we're recording this, he was on Good Morning America this morning talking about the release of the album. We've already seen the track release for Fun. It's got 14 songs on it. One of them is Shallow, which is also going to be the first single released from the album. Have you seen the picture with the two of them? I have. Um, Real. So great. It's so great. So did you guys have anything to add? I just threw all that information out there. You know what I learned? I didn't know there were six different album covers. I guess I got to go buy five more. (laughs) Okay, so I think that's all we have for episode four. Thank you guys again so much for joining us. We are having so much fun doing this. We hope that you're enjoying it as well. Don't forget to visit our website, garthology.com. Also, you want to get a hold of us on our Instagram and Twitter, we are at Garthology Cast. And if you go there and like and retweet, it will definitely help as well. And don't forget to go to your podcast platform of choice, Apple or Google or Amazon or however you listen to your podcast. Leave us a review, um, a rating, share us with your friends. And on the website, if they were at the Vegas Wind Show, or any other live show or have any pictures or anything that they want to share or uh, topic ideas that we could talk about on a future podcast. That'd be great. Leave them there for us as well. We're really looking to interact with you fans. Uh, we're fans. You guys are fans. Um, we're really hoping to be able to, to keep this interaction up and grow this thing. Uh, well, we need you guys to help us do that. So we'd appreciate it. Yeah, and we actually have a special page on our website that is dedicated to sending us information. There's a submit show ideas tab that you can go to. Um, On there, you can interact with us. It'll automatically send us an email. So be sure and jump on there, leave us some comments or some reviews and get a hold of us, send us your stuff. We will be happy to interact with you and share our love of Garth with you. So this is Debbie. I'm Pete. And I'm Jess. Bye, everybody. Bye. Peace out. Bye. And why are you both laughing at me? I'm going to blush. Because you said Gladys Knight and the pimps. Oh, did I? <laughs> I got to stop drinking. <laughs> it's the pimps. The pimps. Pimps. Pimp. Oh, I said pimp. You said pimps. No, I got an accent. Uh, I blame the pina coladas. It's called a pina colada <laughs> accent. <laughs> okay, so now I found the ending to the fourth episode. When she laughs, this is what she does, right? Jess goes like this when she laughs. She looks away. Deb goes like this. (laughs) Comes right out the thing. You stop it. Don't do that. Gosh, dang it.